I'm here with Harry Littman of the Talking Feds YouTube channel and the Talking Feds podcast. Make sure you all are subscribed to both. Harry Littman trial is here in the Trump a criminal case against him for the falsification of business records to interfere with the 2016 election. All of Donald Trump's efforts at delay, delay, delay have been rejected on Friday. In fact, the appellate division rejected a lingering one. Donald Trump had previously filed an emergency application to stay the proceedings based on venue. That was rejected the prior week. But then on Friday, the appellate division said, what are you talking about? You're in trial. The full panel can and that we ain't we ain't here in that and it seems that justice mershon has a very firm grip on the courtroom on donald trump there was a moment even at the end of friday where donald trump was um leaving the courtroom prematurely which may be discussed in other types of testimony when stormy daniels takes the stand but donald trump was leaving the <laughs> donald trump was leaving the courtroom too early we'll just say and justice mershon said where do you think you're going sir you need to sit down sir and then donald trump kind of put his hands up sheepishly and then sat down and then Justice Mershon said, thank you. Counsel, here's what I want you to do. Um, this is the headline from the Daily Beast. Trump fumes as a judge orders him to sit like a dog. I think the fumes part, there was other reporting about Donald Trump having certain other issues in the courtroom regarding uh, passing gas, but we won't talk about that on this uh, one right here. But Justice Mershon really just treating this like this is a any other criminal trial and i think donald trump is actually falling in line when you apply the pressure of the law and you get rid of the whining and this and that donald trump actually backs down i think when you when you have a firm hand what do you make of all of this in trial week one man there's a lot uh, going on so i largely agree and on the dog point not just fumes but the sleeping what what you know uh, Trump was uh, nodding off and there may be, you know, some kind of issues about medication and the like. Mayor Sean, as you said, you know, a, it was really telling at the end, not just that he did it, but sheepish is a is a good word. He was cowed was uh, Trump. And that just doesn't happen. On the other hand, let's remember that uh, in some ways this is Trump's hand to play. If he wants to make trouble, he will, and he can force Mayor Chan to respond. And at least in other instances, that's become his strategy, especially as the substance of cases have, have kind of gotten away from him to literally try to generate um, conflict and antagonism with the judge. And even this week, yeah, look, on the one hand, Mayor Chun, very, I wouldn't say like a normal trial. In a normal trial, you, and you know this, Ben, you wouldn't take bring in a hundred and just let half of them go because they say they couldn't be fair. But he didn't want to mess with the sort of retail discussions of could you, couldn't you, et cetera. And that's what enabled him to seat a jury with such dispatch. But there were little, well, first of all, the intensity of the trial, the stress, the emotional um, force came through in the juror questioning, I thought, including certain um, juror candidates who said, um, you know, I didn't realize how stressful this would be. The one that came back after having been chosen and obviously was shaken up when people knew she was on the jury. This is... Um, in, in that sense, it's not a normal workaday trial. It is freighted and it will call on Mayor Chun to really exercise control and discipline, which he has done well to date, I agree. But man, shit happens, especially with Trump around. And we got a very vivid reminder of it at the end of the day when a man sets himself on fire. But there were uh, instances where Trump was kind of fuming, and we'll see if he stays, uh, maybe even more than a dog, I would say, like a badly behaved child in class, and he, he was forced uh, to, to you know, sit and take it. But will that continue? How will it, you know, play when, if he decides just for political reasons, he wants to really be the martyr? Can he really just sit still even for 
four weeks or it's, uh, of testimony. So a commendable performance this week by Mayor Chan, it's true, but I, I don't think we can say that Trump has been definitively brought to heel. Well, you know, the trial is still in its very early stages, opening right. statements on Monday, the jury has been selected and sworn in. Any surprises so far to you that you weren't expecting? Uh, you t- tell us about that. Yeah. So I think, um, by the way, I'm 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 headed out uh, next week, and I I, ho- I thought I might even make the opening statement, but I, I, I but I'll be there as of Thursday. I think the uh, the jury well that a couple people were chosen and then and then struck. That was uh, a, you know a bit of a surprise that Trump has been domesticated or whatever word you'd use. That's been a surprise. I think the jury, you you know this, Ben, you come to the end, you're out of peremptory challenges. Both sides are taking risks. But as I look at the 12 anyway, and, you know, betting odds are how many alternates are we going to need before this trial is over? But as I look at the 12, I don't see the uh, the really strong candidate to be a holdout for Trump, which is what he wants. I'm surprised you could say that it's a very sort of, there are two lawyers on the jury. I don't know if you've ever been called for jury duty. I have, but I never get chosen. And there's a lot of sort of, you know, pretty sophisticated Manhattan professionals, executives, uh, and and the like. Um, I was, I don't know, surprised, but struck of that a number of jurors just wouldn't um, uh, necklace his uh, Trump's lawyer, tried very hard to elicit basically negative views about Trump, and they wouldn't give it to him. It was clear that a lot of the people knew him, not just from the last seven years, but from the whole New York ecosystem that he's played a dominant role in for Many years he was he's, he was this outsized figure for good or for bad. Usually, I think for bad in the jury selection. So that part of it came home also. Things that like when you thought about it, you said, "Oh yeah, of course." But uh, but when they first um, you know a- occurred, uh, struck me uh, with some surprise. So on Monday, opening statements, you think we even start getting to witnesses on Monday? There was that interesting moment at the end of the proceedings on Friday. We also saw it at the end of the proceedings on Thursday, where Trump's uh, defense lawyers requested of the Manhattan District Attorney to provide the names of the witnesses. There's no actual requirement unless the judge orders that the names be turned over. As it's been described to me by people who practice in that courtroom, you almost always turn over the names, though, except in a rare circumstances. Karen Friedman Agnifilo, who's done many trials there, told me she could only think of one case involving like a kind of serious serial murderer um, that she had done a case uh, in- involving where they were too afraid to give the witness names in advance. Um, And, you know, but she thought as the former number two of that office, it's fully justified here based on Donald Trump's continuous gag order violations, not to provide the witness order for next week, purely to protect those witnesses. So what did you think about that? And based on your experience as a federal prosecutor, what did you make of it? Yeah. And by the way, I've been, I, you know, I spent a summer in that office. It is a routine courtesy, and this is a real cost exacted for Trump um, for, you know, his, the, the, his obstreperousness and his incorrigibility. Those are two SAT words, but I think they fit. Look, it's a big difference. You're the lawyer. Yeah, they know in general, but man, it is time to really hunker down and know who you're cross-examining on Monday and when the, or Tuesday. And when the answer is, it could be anybody, they are, they, they have a weekend from hell ahead of them. And what struck me about that is you're right. It's up to them, but the judge, so quickly uh, assented and basically made it clear that they're being reasonable because of Trump's out of court conduct. This is the really the first time the thousand, you know, the thousand bucks for for violating the gag order that they're proposing. They'll have a hearing on it next week. That doesn't that doesn't bother him at all. This actually hurts, I think, and hurts his um, counsel. So I was struck by it. And I think it's an augury of like, 
you know, he has he's he's really burned some bridges with with Merchan and it could get worse or it could get better. And again, it's they, they are his cards to play all the sense in the world to try to straighten up and fly right, especially with a jury looking at you now that we start opening statements. But Trump has his own ideas and his own political agenda. So will he or won't he or even I could say, I wonder what you think about this, Ben. Could he? You know, is he capable even of just like sitting still and acting uh, civil? You know, we're going to see. Yeah, I don't think he can, although his lawyers are trying to distract him with a picture book of articles that are uh, that they perceive to be flattering. They actually pay someone who travels with them now and has a portable printer, and then they give him the book of the headlines. And then Trump takes his Sharpie and he crosses out the parts of the article that he doesn't like, and then they Re, they send him back the article with the redaction. I mean, you can't you can't make this stuff up, folks. But anyway, Harry Littman, always a pleasure to have Likewise. you on. Everybody, make sure you subscribe to Harry's YouTube channel. It is the Talking Feds YouTube channel. You just search Talking Feds, hit subscribe there. If you like the types of hot takes we do here on the Midas Touch YouTube channel, you will love the hot takes on Harry's channel, Talking Feds. Harry, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll, and let's talk next week, Bannon, on my channel, too, because I'll, I'll expect to be in court and I'll, you know, have that extra kind of vantage point. First hand knowledge. Hold your nose. Hit subscribe. We're Ooh. on our way to three million subscribers. Thanks to your support. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Real quick, Meta just changed their algorithm to suppress political content. Please follow our Instagram at Midas Touch right now as we head towards 400,000 followers so you don't miss a beat.